pleasure to, in a moment, welcome to the stage Dr. Dominic Lam, who is both creating visionary art and helping people in the world restore their vision. He does amazing things around the world. He's the president of the World Eye Organization, the founding director of the Hong Kong Institute of Biotechnology, and received the U.S. High Tech Entrepreneur of the Year Award. He's also appointed as a member of the United States President's Committee on the Arts and Humanities by President George H.W. Bush and received the Presidential Medal of Merit. Dominic Lamb is helping the world in many ways and we are very fortunate to have him here today and excited to hear about his latest work and see some of his art. Please welcome to the stage Dr. Dominic Lamb. Thank you. When I was invited to give uh, a talk here with a title of Forever, um, I actually had no idea why the organizer chose this as the theme of this conference. Forever is indeed a popular and romantic word. After all, we are constantly reminded that a diamond is forever, especially during a season like this, the Christmas season. Of course, we know that that cannot be true because according to physical laws, all matters have half-lives. So even a diamond cannot be forever. It will someday decay into other matters or energy. So for those of you who want to give gifts to your lovers, just tell them that a flower is just as forever. <laughs> no one knows when the idea of forever actually first emerges. Although it might have started when an early wise man stared into the heavens. In this regard, it's of interest that, by coincidence, um, I have been painting the universe for the last six years. So I'd like to share with you a 15-meter painting that I did for an exhibition at Louis Vuitton, Hong Kong, in 2009, celebrating the 40th anniversary of Man on the Moon. Okay, so in the beginning there was, there was darkness. Then about 13.7 billion years ago, all the matters and energies come to one point and we have the Big Bang. So, Half a million or so years after the universe started, the matters and energies become cooler, and we have stardust, star clouds, and nebulas. If these colors remind you not as much of painting as may be taken from the Hubble telescope, I assure you that these are my paintings that are done uh, on photographic paper that I will explain a little later. By now, another billion or two years have passed by, and we begin to see different stars, uh, small stars and, and clumps of matter. And about four billion years ago, uh, be right after our Earth was born, life began. Here there are, there are eight circles of stars representing the four seasons, uh, spring, summer, autumn. Autumn is largest because I'm celebrating the moon. This is the earliest philosophy in China. And for those of you who are interested, I suggest that you read 
uh, a book called Yi Jing, I C H I N G, or Nine Card Diagram. In another 10 billion years or so, all the energy and mass will begin to, to dissipate. But according to the laws of physics, especially the conservation of energy and mass, matter is never destroyed or created. Consequently, even though some people view the universe as having a beginning and an end, there are also others who feel that this isn't true, that the universe merely circles round and round and round forever. And the different manifestations, whether it's this universe or the last one or the one after ours, are just different stages in time. So let's say tens of billions of years later, uh, as the matters become dissipated, don't forget even a dark universe um, actually contain the same amount of energy and mass as the universe at any time. So in this video, rather than having a beginning and an end, and here we have darkness, and then in another hundred billion years or so, we will have another Big Bang, as statistically, when all the matter and energy come back together again. What is also interesting is that this painting was done not by traditional techniques, but rather it is by a process in which I paint directly on black and white photographic paper with diluted photographic solutions. And colors in this instance are produced by the interactions of light and nanometer silver particles. Um, and the colors are produced by Raleigh and my scattering. This is an article that Dr. Rossiter and I wrote for Scientific American in 1991, November. And for those of you who are interested in learning more about this process, uh, you can read this article or simply Google chromoskedasic. Okay, what is interesting about what I just said is that, in a way, what I tried to accomplish was to have a representation of the largest physical entity known to man by some of the smallest entities, meaning elementary particles and light, which as you know, could also act in a particular form. So from what I just said, then in fact, the universe probably is forever. In the living world, which as I said, started about four billion years ago, the virus is probably the closest to forever. Now viruses, are merely a bunch of DNA and RNA that are wrapped by proteins. And they have been here for almost four billion years. When I was traveling throughout China in the 80s, I realized that hepatitis B, which is a viral disease affecting the liver, affect hundreds of millions of people in China. So my dream in the 80s was that if somehow, someday, I could make vaccines that can be taken orally, let's say from fruits and vegetables, then people can just take them home and drink them according to the physician's instructions. Um, of course, not being an immunologist or vaccinologist, uh, I could do that because most of these people thought that this was a crazy idea 
and won't work. Um, however, in collaboration with Professors Anson and Mason, with the help of my children Yi and Fang Lam, we succeeded to produce vaccines against hepatitis B and other diseases in the 90s. The problem then was that human clinical trials are very expensive and lengthy. So we switch first to animal vaccines. And the one that we had uh, proven the efficacy and safety is called TGEV, that's made in corn. We show that swine, pigs, that eat our corn containing TGEV vaccine were all protected against transmissible gastric enteritis, which is diarrhea, but very severe diarrhea, like our stomach flu, but much more severe, and can cause death in swine. And this was done in collaboration with the US Department of Agriculture. Now, while many viruses do not mutate readily, for example, uh, hepatitis, TGV, and so on, so plant vaccines have a great use uh, for that, for those diseases. However, many diseases, as we found out in the past decade, we got SARS, we got uh, uh, avian flu, and, and these are viruses that mutate rapidly. So I thought then we have to attack by uh, by organisms that can also replicate fast, very fast. And since I've been taking lactobacteria, which is found in foods like yogurt and so on, um, for our work, we got pattern of the year uh, from MIT in the year 2000 using this corn. So this work allow us now to have flu vaccines that can cross different animals and also can be taken as food by animals and men alike. Of course, we're still in clinical trials. Um, in the next slide, okay, so my dream is as of the last 20 years is that babies can take a free pack of corn or tomato juice and just go home and be vaccinated against many diseases. Now, in my last 30 seconds, I like to quote Xu Tongpo, who is my favorite philosopher from a thousand years ago. He said that if we look at heaven and earth as being there forever, in fact, they are changing every second. If we look at uh, heaven and earth as changing forever, then in fact, they're stationary forever. So my dear folks, my time is up, and I want to thank you for listening. Um, and I want to leave you with a thought that we are all forever. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.